very good evening. And what I'm going to talk about is, and the title of my presentation is um, Embracing Contradictions, Manifesting Desires. Puneet came to me with the, the topic of this year's TED, Inclusive Mind, uh, Rational Heart, and asked if I had an idea worth spreading or a story worth telling. And I thought I had both, and I readily agreed. The idea and the stories that I'm going to talk about today are around manifesting desires. They are around making wishes come true. Imagine a life where you can manifest your desires and make your wishes come true. In my personal life, I've had not one, not two, not ten, a hundred incidents where wishes have come true. So much so that I started to study the phenomenon. I started to notice it. I started then to practice it, believe in it, and it's been a life very interesting. So I stand here today um, to talk to you about uh, manifesting desires and making wishes come true, a truly empowering idea. There's a lot of literature out there on this subject, and, and I'm sure a lot of you have already read the works um, of um, Wayne Dyer, The Power of Intention, Shakti Gawain, um, Creative Visualization, and of course the very famous book, The Secret. And, and they've all talked about this phenomenon, this aspect, a truly powerful idea. The way it works, according to them, and, I'll, and then I'll come to um, how, I, how, how I view it and what I do with it, um, but the way it works, according to them, is um, in your mind's eye, you visualize an idea, an emotion, a thought, an object that you wish to manifest. It's got to be sincere, it's got to be realistic, um, it's got to be honest, and once you've done that, um, you feed it positive energy. You focus on that idea, emotion, or thought again and again, and uh, you f uh, give it positive energy, and, and you revisit it, you act on it, you're in a state of gratitude, it comes true. And it does. Um, there's a lot of research and thought that's gone behind this. Um, there's a lot of empirical evidence that um, this process works. My process is the working man's and, and the busy man's and, um, process, which draws upon this um, on manifesting desires and making wishes come true. Okay, And I, I will very quickly talk about it. And, and there are some thoughts that I'm going to let flash at the back um, by a lot of these authors who I have great respect for. I must say here, um, that I am, and, and this is a disclaimer, not an, uh, an expert on this, or I don't go around teaching these processes. I'm not a spiritual guru. I'm just a subject and an object of some of these incidents, um, some of these happenings, which I think have been not one, not two, not ten, but a hundred bizarre, uncanny incidents, which led me to feel compelled to stand here and talk to you about manifesting desires and making wishes come true. So um, let me give you a few stories from my personal life, just a few stories. And like I said, there are so many. One, um, let, me, let me start with one. And actually, I got started. And I must say, and I tell you how I got started on this. And this was by a lecture by Deepak Chopra. Um, I got started and I got thinking when I did a course by Deepak Chopra, who's written a lot around this and a whole lot of other stuff, and, and it fascinated me. And, he, and Deepak Chopra to, talked about how he got started. He got started many years ago um, in an incident that happened with his mother um, or, and, and, and how his mother, through the power of intention, had um, this experience and meeting and interaction with Pandit Jawar Lal Nehru, and he got started and got thinking, and, and he was my trigger. And once I got started and I got thinking, I started to notice some of the events in my life. Um, let me give you some. 
we were we got married, me and my wife Seema, and then we started. Um, we were were hoping to have a child, and it was very difficult for it to happen. And after a lot of difficulty, um, we did um, conceive a child, and we were expecting. Um, I was traveling overseas, and I get a phone call that she has been taken to the hospital, and it so turns out that it was an ectopic pregnancy. And in an ectopic pregnancy, well, it was a, a rushed operation. They take one ovary out, one tube out, and the other tube, the doctor tells me upon my return, is also blocked, so it's going to be virtually impossible to conceive a child. Well, that's fine, and then what, what do we do? We try. It doesn't work. We try some more. It doesn't work. And this was many years ago, and then we said, okay, it's time to go to Bombay and, and visit a clinic around IVF, in vitro fertilization, because the natural way is not going to happen. And as I, one part of the brain said, you know, this is what the doctor is saying, this is what science is saying, let's go and look at IVF. The other part of the brain said, it will happen. One part of the brain said, let's book the tickets. The other part said, you know what, it'll happen. And ladies and gentlemen, I mean, the, the week that we were going to go um, and leave for Bombay, we actually discovered that it had happened. I'll fast forward a few weeks, a um, few months actually, and, um, and now this, this difficult um, period is over and, and, and my wife is seeing a doctor, Dr. Sheila Mehra, I remember, um, in Defense Colony. She's a Padma Shri, a, a leading gynecologist. And just a simple thing, um, she, she checks for the heartbeat of the child and, and she says, it's, it's fine, but um, the child is breech. So, which means the legs are down and the feet are up. And that causes complications. <clears throat> my wife gets very worried. And Dr. Sheila Mehra says that you've got to go and get a sonography done tomorrow morning. I still remember. Um, so one part of the brain said, here is a, a Padma Shri gynecologist, and, and she, she's just seen, and the child is reached. And the, my other side of the brain um, said, and, I'll, and I'm telling you why I'm telling you this very shortly, and stories like that, um, said, well, um, and I tell my wife, tomorrow morning, the child will be back in the original position, or I change my name. And the next day, we go, and, and she's, I leave her to the, um, to the um, uh, Spring Meadows Clinic um, to get the sonography done. I had to go open the office, and, and I tell her that, you know, get in line, I'll come back. I go open the office, I come back, and the child's back to its original position. It's no longer breech. And I can go on and on, um, tell you 100 such stories. Um, I was in USA for a PhD program after IIT, and I was coming back, and I, um, we did a joint venture with uh, an American organization called QAI. And um, I come back, um, we get started. I don't like, because I'm, you know, I'm very fond of design, I don't like the logo that QAI USA has, and I come back and I say, you know what, I'm going to change the logo. And I, I talked to Bill Perry and I said, I'm going to change the logo and um, um, I'm, we're going to operate with this logo and, 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 and that's fine. But one part of the brain says, one day, one day, um, this is the logo that's going to be the logo of QAI. Just a few years ago, um, after almost a decade, we actually acquired um, our American company, the parent company, and, and the wish of this logo came true. There are several examples, not one, not two, 100, bizarre. Whether it, had to, it has to do with um, movie tickets, whether it has to do with relationships, people coming in and getting hired in our organization, um, keeping the last two seats on a cruise till the time we can decide whether we want to purchase it or not. Two seats, and they remain till the last day. Now, there are all these incidents, 
And, and like I said, I started to notice them. And as you start to notice them, and you start to study them, um, you start to believe in them. And I'm not a, you know, ultra right brained, you know, blind faith guy. I'm a science student, an engineer, even worse. Um, and, and, and there's a lot of empirical evidence that I started to study. The crux of all this, or the, and the way the process works is, um, and, and, you know, and it, it dovetails or sits on top of the processes that um, Shakti Gwain and everyone else in the world talk about is that we have to understand, embrace, and acknowledge contradictions. Um, and, and it is this ability to understand, accept, and embrace contradictions is what makes the difference. And let me explain what I mean by that. To make wishes come true, and to make, um, you know, and to manifest desires, you have to be hugely passionate about what you're doing. At the same time, you have to be dispassionate. And I'll give you many more examples. You know, this is the whole concept of contradictions, and, and, um, and there are several other ways that we will, I will talk about being contradictory, but I would like to refer here to the seminal work done by Roger Martin. Um, and the concept is called the opposable mind. Now this is a very interesting concept, and I married the opposable mind with the processes that are out there. The opposable mind comes from the opposable thumb. Did you know that man is the only animal where the index finger opposes the thumb? And because the index finger opposes the thumb, man can play music, can write, can paint, can pick up a bow and arrow, and can do a hundred things that animals cannot do. That is, the, that is the opposable thumb. And what Roger Martin's research shows is that um, we can cultivate an opposable mind, just like we have an opposable thumb. And the human brain and, and leaders and thinkers and highly innovative people and manifestors have all been seen to have an opposable mind. What does that mean? It means that we cultivate a mind or a brain where two um, very opposite ideas can coexist together without being dysfunctional, and in the creative tension of these ideas comes magic. We've been trained um, you know, uh, in our lives to, to select one or the other, A or B. We, we, ch we choose A, we reject B, and the brain is trained to, to hold one idea or one thought at a time. What happens when the brain can be trained to hold two ideas, opposable ideas, um, contradictory ideas, at the same time in the same brain simultaneously? In that creative tension, at the boundaries, is that's where um, all the magic happens. Now, coming back to creative visualization, i.e. Uh, manifesting desires, i.e. Um, um, getting your wishes to come true. The ability for us to um, hold opposable or contradictory states of being is critical to the manifesting of desires. So, um, so the idea that we had was, um, or the concept was, you have to be passionate and dispassionate at the same time. Some people are passionate, some people are dispassionate. We choose to be A, we choose to be B. What if we could be both at the same time? Passionate in our actions and dispassionate around the outcomes. The universe acknowledges this. What happens when um, a contradictory state of being, when we have very clear, very clear goals in mind, specific clear goals in mind, and, and yet we simultaneously, one part of the brain has clear specific goals in mind, and the other part of the brain says, go with the flow. And, and, and people who can do that, um, 
are, are well served, and the universe addresses this. What happens um, when you believe that the universe, and there's a huge, complete belief that the universe will make the wish come true? We believe in the universe. One part of our body or brain or feeling, emotion says that this will come true, and the other part says um, it may not come true, and, and the reason is because the universe has other ideas and, and better plans for you. So it's, it's a complete trust and faith that your wish will come true. At the same time, um, almost in a contradictory way, but it's not. It's duality. Um, we, we know that it may not come true, right? So, so what, how this, the whole process works is when we know that there, with certainty, that there is, the certainty is that of uncertainty. When we are passionate and at the same time dispassionate. When we have a very sincere, intense desire for an outcome to happen and at the same time we're not attached to it. When we trust and believe in the universe and yet we know the universe has other ways and means. Coming back to these one, ten, hundred incidents, is it that every time that we desire something, it comes true? Is it that every time um, we want an emotion, a feeling, or an object that, that it manifests and the universe responds to um, to, to make it happen for us? And the answer is no. It doesn't happen every time. So there are certain preconditions um, to this. One, of course, like I said, is, is the ability to be, to be in a certain state where you're embracing contradictions. The desire, of course, has to be sincere. The desire has to be realistic. Um, the desire um, has to be, or the wish has to be one which you are willing to accept should it happen. Sometimes we make wishes and, you know, and there's some part inside us which is saying that if it were to happen, I don't know. Um, we're, we're scared of the success. We're scared of, you know, getting this huge amount of money or we are some part of us. So, so it's got to be sincere. Um, it's got to be realistic. We have to be in the state of gratitude. Um, it's got to be not negative. A negative wishes don't come true. Um, it's not at the cost of somebody else. And when we are in, in and when, when these conditions are in fact met, do the wishes come true? Not always. They still don't always come true. Uh, maybe they're on their way. We don't know it yet. I didn't know so many things till five years, ten years later in my life when they did manifest. All I did was had an intention and I parked it into the universe. And once it got parked, I had this faith and belief that one day it would come true and, and, and some days it did, but not always, not always. And the universe has its ways. So then what's the big deal? I mean, if every time it's not going to come true, what's the big deal? Well, what we are doing is actually increasing the probability by following these processes and having these attributes and being in a certain state. What we are doing is increasing the probability hugely that our wishes and desires come true. Life is all about batting averages, isn't it? So I'd like to end um, leaving this thought with you um, with a very uh, last, very quick story around manifesting desire again. Um, and this has to do with TED. Um, I am a great TED fan. I have been a great TED fan for a number of years. So much so that um, I had made it mandatory for myself many years ago to get up in the morning uh, on Sundays and listen to TED videos um, because um, I, I used to love them so much. In fact, um, you know, not only is it 
in, you know, in those days, and I was such a fan of TED, was it ideas worth spreading? It was a website worth spreading, and I would tell everyone about it, including everyone in my office. Now, so I used to look at these TED videos on Sunday mornings because you learn so much from them, awesome people. And deep down, and secretly, and I'll confess this to you, I had a desire. And the desire was to speak at a TED conference. The universe made it come true. Once again, it worked. It took some time, it worked. So, folks, I'd like to conclude here with this idea that we can in indeed live a life full of wonderment, a life full of empowerment, a life where if we are able to embrace these contradictions and be in this state of duality, that we are hugely increasing the probability of our wishes coming true. I'd like to leave by leaving this thought on the table. And one part of you is probably going to go back from here and saying this is bullshit. What I want you to do, which is perfectly okay, because remember, we're embracing contradictions. I would urge and I request that one part of you say it could happen. If it happens to people around the world, and there's stuff written about it, and, and, I'm, and I'm saying it happened to me, one part of you, I'd urge you for one part of you, one part of your brain to say it could happen, and, and maybe the universe works in its magical ways, while one part can say it's bullshit. That's a contradiction. Live with it, and over a period of time, this will get resolved. When you start to notice it, and all I'm saying is, by spreading this idea, is I'm hoping that from tomorrow, you'll start noticing these accidents, these coincidences, these co miracles, these bizarre, uncanny events in your life, these wishes coming true, these desires manifesting, and once you notice them, they will feed on themselves. You will feed it more positive energies. All I ask you to do is to walk away by put, parking this idea in one side of your brain and, and giving it consideration. It comes true. So um, thank you very much, and I hope all your wishes come true and do explore this journey and embark on this journey of wonderment and fulfillment. Thank you very much.